contributed to still more unforgettable pitching that season as reliever Elroy Face went 18 and 1 out of the bullpen. Face made the fork ball famous, and for 14 years, he was the buck stopper. Roy Face, one of the all time greats here in Warren, Pennsylvania. And Elroy, you started baseball in Bradford, Pennsylvania. Back in 1949. I was there in 49 and 50. And for the two years, you were, you were starting pitcher, right? I was a starting pitcher my whole minor league career. Uh, I was 14 and 2 in 49. I was 18 and 5 in 19. Uh, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Well, I originally signed with the Philly organization. Uh, they owned uh, Bradford Blue Wings at that time. And then in 50, they changed it to the Phillies. But uh, I originally signed with Carbondale. And uh, Danny Carnavalli was the manager in, in uh, 49. And when we went to spring training, he wanted me with the Bradford team. so. Bradford bought my contract from Carbondale. I'll be darned. And uh, I opened a season with them and spent two years there in Bradford. Oakland's season ended with a three-game playoff between Jamestown and Bradford. For Bradford won the final playoff game, five to four, with Danny Carnavalli scoring the winning run in the ninth inning, and the winning pitcher. Of course, Elroy Face. In Bradford that evening ended dramatically with the Phillies winning five to four. Her team, managed by Danny Carnavelli, featured a pitcher who would achieve great fame in the major leagues. Or unforgettable pitching that Elroy Face. Is it coming into Jamestown, New York? Oh yeah, I remember one time uh, we had to carry baseball bats to our dugout, or to our clubhouse, because uh, the fans, we beat the, the Jamestown team and the, the fans were mad about it. The umpire made a call and they thought it was against their team and we, we actually uh, took baseball bats from the dugout and walked through the crowd to the clubhouse. For a little protection, huh? Yeah, <laughs> in case. That's right, that's right. Your manager in 1949 was? Danny Carnival. Marv Olson was your manager then. Do you remember all that? Yep. Marv Olson managed the Jamestown Club. And we used to have almost had a fist fight. <laughs> I remember that too, 1949. That's right. God. You scored the winning run. Right. I was playing shortstop then, had one of my best years. I had 375. <laughs> I wish I'd have done it when I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> Lutz. Ronnie Lutz. Do you remember some of the ball players who played in the league at the time? Uh, well, yeah, uh, Don Zimmer played, uh, Stu Miller, uh, Kenny Boyer, uh, Harmon, outfielder, Chuck Harmon. Uh, 1954, I was sent back to New Orleans to work on an off-speed pitch, and uh, I worked on about half the season and started using it. Those are the... Well, now the Yankees have been feeling very nervous because you've been throwing at them a fork ball. I'd like you to illustrate what a fork ball is so the country can understand it when they read well, it. Well, I hold it between my first two fingers like that mm -hmm. without any seams, and I throw it straight overhand like the fastball, and the ball will usually sink. I think that's unfair to our organized Yankees. I really do. It's awfully nice to have you. How about Roy Face after Bradford? This is kind of a quick synopsis. Well, I, I was drafted after Bradford, the second season of Bradford. Uh, I was drafted to the uh, Dodger organization. Mr. Ricky drafted me, and I spent uh, 51 at Pueblo and was 23 and 9 with a, with a sixth place ball club there. And uh, in 52, I went to Fort Worth, Texas with the Dodger organization. In the winter of 52, they put me on the Montreal roster to protect me. Uh, but uh, Branch Rickey drafted me again to Pittsburgh, and uh, I was number one draft that year mm -hmm. in the Major League Draft. So that's when you came to Pittsburgh? I came to Pittsburgh in 53 and uh, spent 15 years there. Until 68, I was sold to Detroit. Spent a month in Detroit, finished the season, and uh, the next spring was released and signed with Montreal. My last year was 69 in Montreal. And one of the great relief pitches of all time. 1960, uh, there was a reunion in 1990, uh, and it was at the Robert, it was Robert, Robert Morris, Morris right. exactly, and we, right. I've got some movies of you uh, playing the banjo and, and singing with uh, some of the ball players, and it was a hoot. Well, yeah, we, we uh, Hal Smith and I played the guitar and sang a little bit, and we made the Perry Como show once, and we made a few movie theaters around 
Erie and down through to Pittsburgh and Morgantown, West Virginia. And, and we just had a ball with it for, for that winter. Once again, it was Elroy to the rescue. Law departed after six and a third innings with the Pirates ahead three to two. And that's the way it stayed thanks to Face, who registered his second save of the series with some fine defensive support from center fielder Bill Verdon. With the series now tied at two games apiece, Face was fast becoming unconcerned. There hasn't been anybody that, uh, that has been as effective as Roy has in a relief role. Bases loaded, nobody out, more than once. The bases were still loaded and three out. Face, thank you very, very much. My pleasure. Can you come on walking with? One G. G. Yeah. One G. Can you come on walking holding? 